This is Late Night Health. This is the radio show that cares about the most important part of your life, your health. During the next two hours, we're going to explore a wide variety of health concerns and issues that affect each and every one of us. We're going to take a look at dating and the stress of having a stalker date you. That'll happen in hour two. We're going to be talking about the importance of family, not only your biological family, but we'll also take a look at your extended family. And we'll take a look at the adrenal glands. That's all happening on today's edition of Late Night Health. Well, we're going to talk to a new friend, Kian Butte. And uh, he is a interventional radiologist and interventional oncologist uh, raised here in Southern California. And um, we uh, welcome uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Vu to Late Night Health. Doctor, how are you? Doing great. Thank you for having me on the program. Our pleasure. If I had known you were so close, we would have had you come into the studio. Well, there'll be plenty of opportunity to, uh, for, uh, to do that. And then Daryl, I can always put him put a touch on him for, for lunch, you know? And he's got a great radio voice. He does have a great radio voice. <laughs> he, well, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, th- do we hate him for that? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, we'll see how he does. If, if uh, he starts getting some of our, our voiceover gigs. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, we, whole, whole I, another world. We can give him that uh, that that narration right anyway um i'm narrating a a, a, a book from hell anyway uh we are uh, gonna talk about health here uh you were a, a fat kid you know i wasn't so much a fat kid I, I turned out to be a fat adult uh about two years ago um I, uh, while i was in private practice i kind of um you know, got to, got to a point of my life and my health where things just weren't jiving for me. So I was overweight, I had high blood pressure, uh, I was diabetic, and I needed to take prescription sleep medications in order to sleep every night. All this at the pinnacle of what I thought was my career when I was the chief of interventional oncology at my hospital at the time. Um, so not not a uh, not a, not the, definitely the low point of my life. You know, I I was uh, in a relationship with somebody I was going to ask to marry me. She left me for another man. So it was it was a point of my oh life my. Was just not connected with myself, not connected with the people around me, not connected with my patients, and not only did those areas of my life not work, but my health didn't work either. Uh, you were you were born in Asia. I was born, yes, I was born uh, three years after the fall of the Vietnam War, and we actually were boat refugees. I spent, uh, you know, eight months on a boat docked right outside a Philippine refugee camp. Ah. I was the only infant to actually have survived that. There was like 2,000 of us cramped in that boat, and I nearly died of dysentery. Uh, Fortunately survived. uh, Another three months in a Philippine refugee camp, and fortunately we were sponsored by uh, the Catholic Church uh, to come to Los Angeles, and have been here since the age of two. Wow. Well, you're a native. That's, yeah. you know. Um, and and Daryl and I are uh, L.A. natives as well. I, I'm curious, are your your family, your, your parents, were they yeah. over, are they, or were they overweight? Um, I had uh, my grandmother... Both my grandmothers were uh, diabetic, uh, overweight, and had passed early. Uh, my parents are not. They had diabetes and uh, through medications gotten a little bit better, but it was more the, their lifestyle changes that has really kind of had that under control. Gotcha. So the, your genetic predisposition is diabetes. Exactly. But exactly. You, But using that new science of epigenetics you've changed it right 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 and it's really not you know a science that has changed it it's really understanding that the way we live our lives the environments that we are in and the environments we give to each cell is more important for our health than the genetics that we've been given and at the and at the at the same time there's something you can do about it 
For I'm, sure. Right? For I'm, sure. But you so, uh, let me just briefly touch on what epigenetics is. Epigenetics sure. is really the study of... Epi means above, and genetics is genes. So epigenetics is the study of the things that are above the genes. So it's the external factors that are above the genetics that we've been given. Uh, so what does that then say? Well, it says that our genetics can give us a predisposition of something, but every single cell in our body has the exact same genes. But you'll notice that there's many different cells in our body. So if you have the same genes, why is it that every you know a cell can be different? Well, it's actually what genes get turned on and what genes turned off, and that's called that's the process of gene expression. So it's the genes that are expressed in a cell that makes one cell uh, a muscle cell and, it, and another cell a liver cell or another cell a heart cell. So it's the, it's the genes that are expressed that makes that. And what determines that expression? Well, those are epigenetic factors. So these, these are things outside of a cell that then say these genes should be turned off and those genes are turned off. And I'm going to assume that two years ago you weren't working out, you weren't watching your diet, and uh, you were, um, uh, even though you were great at work, you, Correct. You, 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 you didn't do the lifestyle changes that you needed to do. Yeah, unfortunately, um, you know, many physicians were never really trained uh, to, to deliver great health. You know, I, I would say that we're great in terms of being able to control a lot of symptoms, but healing is really uh, rooted in discovering what the root causes are. And the, mainly the four, you know, there are four main pillars that really drive uh, good gene expression for health and longevity. And you've mentioned them. Uh, they are diet, they are exercise, they are good sleep, and it's stress management. But the secret sauce that I would probably also say, because there are some people that are just overzealous doing all those things, but they still get sick and they're very, you know, they're, they're kind of stressed out about being healthy. Um, the other thing also is to be able to change our mindset and to be able to cultivate emotions of love, gratitude, be in community. And then there's a, there, there's a study, if we have time, I'd love to talk about, uh, but having a sense of purpose and living a life of purpose actually activates gene expression. All right, has. wait a second. I got to stop here a second. Okay, okay. we're going to stop. We're going to stop here, okay? Yeah. Are you really a doctor? You're saying this? I mean, this is amazing stuff. We talk about this every week on the show. Oh, great. Yeah. No, certainly. And um we're beginning to I think many of us have known this for a long time. But we are beginning to prove that on the scientific level. I actually have a colleague at UCLA, Stephen Cole, uh, who is an epigenetics professor. Yeah. And he uh, actually wrote an article with uh, Barbara Fredrickson demonstrating that when you have that sense of purpose, and what we call eudaimonic happiness, it's the type of happiness you get when you know that you belong to something greater than yourself and you're giving back to something greater for yourself. What they study was a set of genes, and they determined that those people with eudaimonic happiness has genes that lower inflammation, has genes that increase immunity, and there's another set of studies that demonstrated that that eudaimonic happiness also adds telomere length. And, you know, if your audience knows about telomeres... Yeah, we've talked about those, too. The longer, yeah, the better. Sure. So, yeah, definitely maintains your telomere length. So living a life of purpose is really important for your health. Uh, they say that there are no atheists in a war. You're in a foxhole and guns are going off and bombs are going off, right? Mm -hmm. You lived in that. You, you may not remember it. Your family, your parents certainly would. Mm -hmm. And a thought goes through your mind, please God, not me, even if you're an atheist. Sure. Right? Sure. And... Now I have I I mean I have interviewed hundreds if not thousands of doctors over the years of 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 talking as I do and not many doctors say things like 
there's you know a greater something greater than us it can be jesus it can be moses it could be mohammed it could be the light that 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 comes on in the middle of the night for mm-hmm. no reason i mean nobody knows right right but as long as you have a thought a belief in something bigger than yourself you're saying life is better no that, for sure i mean thoughts it's very important, you know. A lot of people are like, "Well, how, how do thoughts affect us?" Well, I mean, a thought actually produces a certain signature of neurochemicals, which then gets your body to start to produce certain hormones in your body. So your thoughts actually has a physiological response that every cell then recognizes. So it's very important to be to be able to cultivate the type of thoughts that you have. Uh, you know, we haven't even mentioned oncology and uh, radiology, and maybe we won't this time. Uh, our guest is uh, Kian Vu, and uh, you can uh, find out about him at kianvu.com. That's K-I-E-N-V-U-U.com. And we're talking about, we're really talking about the kind of stuff that Robert Clancy talks about every week here on the show. He'll be talking about family in, in, uh, I don't know, 45 minutes or so from now. All right. Uh, Dr. Dr. Vu and I return with the Insane Daryl Wayne. Don't you dare go away. More coming up on Late Night Health. Welcome to Guide to the Soul. This is Robert Clancy. Balance in life isn't about making everything equal. It's about sharing equal parts of your heart for each area of your life. Many people seem to struggle with bringing their life into balance. Family, work, and health all seem to be a challenge these days. Think of the demands you have on your own schedule and time. It can be frustrating and overwhelming What's most important to discover is that peace is not about finding a quiet place among the chaos. Peace is about listening for the divine whispers of love amidst this turmoil. Take a breath and you will find balance. For more inspiration from Robert Clancy, visit GuideToTheSoul.com or go to the Moments with Robert page on LateNightHealth.com. The stigma around mental health disorders and suicide is still very strong in our culture. It's an uncomfortable topic for many of us, and yet it's something we can't afford to ignore. According to Dan Shuck, the author of A Glass Half Empty or Half Full, a children's book for grown-ups. Last month, the CDC released a study that reports suicide rates went up more than 30% in half the state since 1999. A Glass Half Empty or Half Full, a children's book for grown-ups, takes a new approach to addressing mental illness. The book playfully explores pessimism versus optimism to find balance, manage stress, and enjoy life. The book uses humor to provide an opportunity to determine the fullness of our own glass and how to apply it to our daily lives. Donations from the proceeds of the book will be made to a Glass Half Question fundraising campaign for the Brain and Behavior Research Foundation. A Glass Half Empty or Half Full, a children's book for grown-ups, is available from Amazon.com, Kindle, and Barnes & Noble. For more information, visit www.glasshalfquestion.com.